I never consider myself that even a good player. I think always myself is a very normal person, normal player. That's why I need to develop more and I need to train more. I need to, you know, do more. So that's my philosophy. In Japanese football, one name stands above all others. Hidetoshi Nakata is an icon in both his homeland and across Asia. In Japan, like, you know, 20 years or 30 years ago, baseball was huge. And the football was just about beginning. So I didn't have uh, any heroes, any dream teams, because I didn't know. But uh, there was a cartoon, it's called uh, Captain Tsubasa. And uh, when I read it, I really loved the football. Then, uh, actually I was thinking about playing uh, baseball or football. Then I chose a football. I started playing uh, wild games, let's say under 15 years old, under 17, under 19. So since like 14, 15 years old, I start knowing about football in outside Japan, which means I started having a dream, but I didn't have a chance because also the world didn't look at the Japanese J League. Finally, we had a chance because of the, we played the World Cup in France. Then, you know, one of my dreams came true. The 1998 FIFA World Cup gave Nakata the ultimate stage on which to shine. It was crazy because, you know, for the first time, Japan played in the World Cup. So, I think uh, even, even though it was in the France, I think uh, half of the stadium, or maybe more than, more than that, there are so many Japanese fans. So, actually, it was not like a away game. It was like a home game. And uh, it gave us really good energy. Of course, lots of pressure, but at the same time, we didn't know what is a World Cup. So sometimes it's good not to have too much information to play better. Nakata's talent didn't go unnoticed. A move to Europe followed, with a 21-year-old signing for Italian Serie A club, Perugia. Today, you can see so many Japanese players around the world. But my time, no one's there. So it was kind of a dream for us to play in Europe. Actually, I got an offer from uh, different clubs, like uh, from France, from England. I don't know why, but uh, for me, Serie A was the, like football. And actually, when I was a kid, the first uniform that I pulled was AC Milan or Inter. <laughs> and um, so for me, it's a European football means Serie A. Of course, when I got an offer from Perugia, I said, yes. Then after that, of course, I went to Rome. Then pressure became, began to bigger. <laughs> Japanese football had an idol, a pioneer. Nakata carried their hopes as they co-hosted the 2002 World Cup. I don't know how many players could play in the World Cups in your country. Only a few players in the world, I think. Even 2002, not many Japanese players were playing outside Japan. And uh, I was kind of a most experienced player. So in a way, I was feeling like I need to lead the team and uh, I need to make, you know, the teammates more, you know, confident, react. So it was a little bit difficult the, to, how to say, to have this kind of a responsibility. In 2006, at 29, Nakata called time on a career that had established him as one of Asia's greatest players. Today, he takes an active role in promoting Japanese culture and has started his own line of sake. I traveled around like three years. So far, 
Uh, in my life, I traveled more than 100 countries. I've learned so many things. I met so many people. But one thing that I really realized that I don't know about Japan. So what I did is to travel all over the Japan. I spent seven years to finish all 47 prefectures just to know about today's life. Now I, start, I started working with craftsmen, sake makers, farmers to promote their products, their culture, to promote them outside Japan, and also to uh, educate the people to give more choice and uh, to let them enjoy more. So that's I have been doing, you know, a couple, couple of years. When you leave from the football, young, older, it doesn't matter. Always it hurts. It's a very difficult decision and, you know, never be easy.